Now, freshly minted Minister for Resources, Water and Northern Australia, Keith Pitt, he's made it very clear he's a big fan of coal, he's an outspoken advocate of nuclear energy, but he's going to have to negotiate a pretty tricky path through Cabinet as Matt Canavan, his predecessor, threatens to cross the floor on some issues related to that portfolio. Now, climate change also has emerged as a key issue going forward. Here's what Keith Pitt had to say when I spoke to him just a short time ago. This decision today by Holden, um, in many ways, uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not just a decision to pull out of the country, but as uh, you and I both know, Keith, we're sort of similar ages, we grew up with Holden cars. We grew up with that famous ad, my first car was a Holden, your first car was a Holden. In many ways, it's a blow to the Australian psyche, isn't it? Oh, it is indeed. I mean, you, you've only got to look at Bathurst, uh, you've only got to look at you know, just how serious the levels of support are across the country. There are individuals out there, Peter, who you know, they live and breathe Holden cars. My first car was a HT Holden Kingswood, three on the tree, bench seat on the front and the back. You can take six people in the car, uh, which is great. But, you know, I, I'm concerned about all those dealerships and all those individuals that are providing parts and replacements. I think anyone that's out there that's got a uh, shed full of spares might want to hang on to them. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Now, look, um, you know, you've hit the ground running with your new portfolio. Obviously, we'll talk about resources and we'll also talk about water. But you, you say living outside the Murray-Darling Basin area probably uh, in many respects helps you to, to, to sort of go through this real problem that exists there at the moment. How do you expect to tackle that? Oh, it's a tough policy era, and, and I certainly understand. You know, water's a scarce resource. Desperate people will always do desperate things. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I get it. Uh, but, I, I mean, there's, there's confidence, I think, can be gained from the fact that my decisions will never have a reflection on my electorate. Uh, I can never be blamed about making a decision uh, because of pressure from my own constituents. Uh, I think that's a good thing. But I certainly look forward to getting on the ground, uh, hearing from individuals uh, this week. I'll be in the Murray-Darling this week. Well, Keith, there is a particular uh, water issue in your electorate that I'm interested in your thoughts on, and that, of course, is the Paradise Dam. Now, we know that there's an inquiry that's begun. Uh, we know that uh, it's a very, very controversial proposal, and you know, certainly blokes on your side of the political fence, particularly at state level, are very angry about the way that the Palaszczuk government has handled this. What are your thoughts? Oh, Gleeson, since we last spoke, the Palaszczuk Labor government have put through legislation in the Queensland Parliament to buy, basically bypass all of their own state laws and environmental laws so they can knock the wall down. Now, I don't see the point in inquiries or any other activities if they've passed a law that says they must reduce the size of the wall. My view is very straightforward. We make safe, we repair, we restore, or we re replace. This is a critical piece of infrastructure. Uh, certainly, as the Federal Water Minister, uh, I've asked my departments to engage themselves and see what options there are at a federal level. Uh, but I'd say once again to the Queensland Labor Government, uh, safety has to be the first priority. Uh, but the second priority has to be how do we repair, restore or retain that facility? Uh, it will take more than a decade to build anything else. Uh, in fact, just to get the approvals could take 10 years. Minister, you've been very clear on uh, your thoughts on nuclear energy. You say that it should be a consideration as we look at all of the energy sources within this country, whether it's coal, whether it's renewables or whatever, solar. Uh, where do you stand right now on energy, considering that, uh, sorry, on uh, nuclear, considering that, uh, you know, it is such a touchy subject in Cabinet? Uh, I've always been technology agnostic. I, I support things that work. Uh, before I moved into the Cabinet, I was a member of a backbench committee. I wasn't even a voting member, Peter, even though the Labor Party might want to make merry with some of that. So uh, Ted O'Brien chaired that committee. It made recommendations to the shareholding minister, which is Angus Taylor. Uh, for a partial lifting of the moratorium. Uh, now, the government's position is very clear. There is a moratorium in place. Uh, there is no way to lift that, in my view and others' view, without bipartisan support. Uh, but Minister Taylor does have a mandatory period in which he has to provide a response, uh, and I certainly look forward to seeing what he's got to say in the near future. And what about this SA farm uh, that's becoming a nuclear waste facility? Tell us more. Well, I introduced legislation to the Parliament on the last day of the sittings last week on Thursday uh, for Nepandi uh, to actually be the facility for Australia's low-level waste. Uh, and certainly, that has been a long process. It's taken some 40 years to complete this search. Uh, and I want to thank the people of the Kimber community for the work that's been done, uh, for you know, the, the fact that they were engaged as a community. 
Uh, there's been surveys run which would demonstrate there's 61% support. Uh, every uh, neighbouring property to the facility site is 100% in support. But I really want to mention Rowan Ramsey, the member for Grey. Uh, he's lived and breathed this issue now for a number of years. It's been really tough, uh, not only for Rowan and his constituents, but him personally. Uh, and I think this is the right decision. Uh, we, we need to do something about where the waste goes from nuclear medicine. Now, nuclear medicine is incredibly important. Uh, one in two Australians are likely to utilise that technology in their lifetime. It prolongs their life. Uh, it could potentially uh, stop them from uh, passing away from cancer. It's a very important technology, but we do need to manage that low-level waste, uh, which is currently stored at Lucas Heights, uh, and this is the solution. Uh, Keith Pitt, you are Resources Minister now. Uh, I mean, we know you're pro-coal. We know you're pro-coal-fired power stations, and yet we continue to have this debate about whether, in fact, uh, coal is the right way to go. And now, you would have seen last week where uh, this so-called Otis group, uh, the right-wingers in the Labor Party, got together at the Otis restaurant to talk about the validity of coal because we saw in central Queensland voters very much back coal at the last election. We saw in the Hunter Valley a huge swing against Joel Fitzgibbon to One Nation because of that sentiment. What would you say to your Labor colleagues and particularly the left of the Labor Party about uh, the future of coal in this country? Well, firstly, Peter, I'm pro-jobs. Uh, I'm pro-resources because it's an important part of our economy, uh, some $280 billion roughly, 250,000 permanent jobs, most of those in the regions. Uh, but we know the Labor Party, <laughs> they're in absolute conniptions. They don't know if they're Arthur or Martha. They're not sure what to do with the subject. Uh, you know, I congratulate Joel Fitzgibbon on standing up uh, to the factions inside the Labor Party. Uh, he actually sees a bit of sense every now and again. Uh, in fact, I've offered to go and uh, brief the group. I understand there's some 20 that attend the Otis restaurant uh, that Joel books. There's no, there's no seat for the opposition leader, but if they could squeeze me in, I'm, I'm happy to go and have a chat. Uh, but I'll continue to try and expand the resources sector because it provides jobs for our people and jobs into the future. The International Energy Agency says coal will be part of the mix for at least four decades. Australia's coal is the best in the world. That's why people buy it. Uh, you know, every individual that's out there should be proud of the job that they do uh, because it's royalties from uh, coal and other resources that pay for schools and roads and hospitals. Uh, Keith, before we go, there's been a bit of rancor in your ranks. I mean, uh, you know, Barnaby Joyce... Uh, took on McCormack and lost. Uh, your predecessor, Matt Canavan, has threatened to cross the floor unless things go uh, th this sort of ginger group's way. Uh, I mean, I think all political parties have their divisions at some point, but uh, this has been particularly unedifying. Uh, how, do you, how do you guys proceed with the Nationals' brand being so badly bruised in the last week or so? Oh, I'll leave the commentary to the commentators, but what, what I will say is that McCormack, the numbers have been tested three times in two years. He's won every time. Uh, we are just getting on with it. I, I take Barnaby and others at their word. Uh, they say that's it. Uh, and we just need to be unified for the sake of the Australian people and for regional Australians in particular. They rely on us to fight for them. That has to be our 100% focus. It certainly is for me, uh, and I think it is for everyone else. Uh, a week in the electorate's a long time for a member of the House of Reps. I think my colleagues will get some very clear messages about what uh, their local people think uh, and we will just continue to get on with what's important. So do you think Barnaby's put his leadership aspirations away? I take him at his word, Peter. He said publicly that's it. Uh, I, I think he's a, he's a valuable member of the team, Barnaby, uh, and certainly he can sell a message uh, if he's so, so inclined. Uh, but we all need to move forward. Uh, the, the role that I have is a very important one in terms of our economy. I want the resources sector to grow. We've got $100 billion in infrastructure on the table. Uh, we are developing things for regional Australia which will secure the future of those people that choose to live in our regions into the future. And I want my kids and their kids to have a job. Uh, that is my focus.